Welcome, everybody. My name is George Donald Miller, and I am here every Wednesday from noon to 1 p.m. Central to help answer career questions, help answer all kinds of questions that you might have about um, navigating. Hello, Oops. Rebecca. Hey, Good George. to see you, Rebecca. Welcome. Thanks. How are you? Doing well. We're yeah. we're just gathering here, getting going in a little bit. Um, will we have you the for the full time today? I'm gonna try. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> Rebecca, anything that you want support with specifically today in your career? Um, I guess just, um, just continued support with, with working with uh, people, dis difficult people and disagreements. Awesome. That is totally so... <laughs> I'm sure that we'll be able to dig into that some today. So I'm going to set a little, I'll set context for a little bit here and uh, more folks will be joining in, but it's awesome to have you here. Well, this, uh, what, what was it? Two, three years ago, we connected on LinkedIn. I don't even remember anymore. <laughs> uh, I think it was. Yeah, that culminated in some fun stuff. I'll have to tell you. <laughs> yeah. The end of that happened this spring, but yeah, it was 2019. Oh, whoa, okay. I had some interesting closure, but it really wasn't closure. Okay. Well, cool. Maybe we should set up a time to talk more about that. Yeah. Okay. Well, fantastic. Well, everybody, welcome. This is Career Lab Wednesday. I am your host, George Donald Miller. I'm here every Wednesday from noon to 1 p.m. Central. And, um, you know, we have topics that we, we tee up, um, and I'll share some about today's topic, but really, I'm here to serve you around whatever it is that you're working on in your career. You might be um, at the beginning of your career, coming out of college, uh, doing some interviews for the first time, um, having questions about that, or maybe pandemic has turned all things upside down in your career and you are looking at other opportunities and you haven't done that in a while and you've got some questions or maybe you are um, wanting to navigate the politics in your company um, with uh, more effectiveness, more ease, more success. So we're here to support you in any questions that you have regarding your career. And when, uh, when I was looking at today's topic around transferable skills and having the right transferable skills, the one, one thing that you can develop that in, unless you're working in an assembly line um, that will impact your career the most is social and emotional intelligence. And that has a lot to do with navigating politics, navigating the conversations, working with uh, co-workers, um, working with clients, and learning how to communicate at a deeper level, um, how to be more in rapport is, that is a skill that no matter what you're doing, unless it's um, you know, working on an assembly line, that that is going to have the greatest impact for you. Um, I, I'll just, I'm just going to share, I was just talking to Jane, um, my assistant about this, I had quite a morning, so I go, uh, I, I go swimming in the lake often when it's cold, because it helps with, you know, health things, if I play basketball, I go in there, and this morning, um, I got out and was greeted by a, a helicopter, a boat, and like five fire trucks, and a whole bunch of people. And um, I was immediately terrified <laughs> and like, oh no, am I gonna like go to jail? Is this gonna cost a bunch of money? Um, oh no, I'm not allowed to have all this stuff. And I actually went into coaching supervision um, this morning 
and just kind of, I was like, I'm so hooked by what just happened to me. And my coach helped me look at it and get a good perspective on myself of, oh, I am assuming that authority does not have good intentions for me. And in fact, I actually have these notes I took, so I'm just going to review them. So I'm in there and that, yes, that, uh, that authority has ill will for me and that it's not going to go well and that I have to try to hide and, um, you know, just get out of there as fast as possible. And as I was processing this, and I did a, I did a decent job with the, the chief officer or whoever I was, I was talking to, but I, I started to feel really sad because I realized that I missed an opportunity to really connect with somebody. Because there was this, there was a bunch of people, but this one guy was basically telling me like, we can't tell you not to go swimming in ice cold water. And yet this is the response that you will probably get if you do, is having a bunch of people show up. And he's the one guy who could probably answer a lot of my questions, but all I wanted to do was get out of there as fast as possible and not get a ticket or something. <laughs> and so that kind of like e initial response that we have to situations and very often at work, you know, a, a client calls in or boss says something. And if I can be more present with my fear and upset and just kind of all the feelings that are happening in life, if I can be more conscious in those moments, then I'll be able to probably make better decisions and get more information and things. And so I was able to stick with it long enough this morning. And, and I did hear one thing he said, which was something about the Marine unit. So I, I ended up calling around Chicago and kind of explaining what I'm doing, et cetera. And I eventually made contact with somebody in the Marine unit who was like, okay, here's what you're gonna do is before you go into the ice water, you're gonna give us a call and I'll put a camera on you. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'll put a camera on you and we will notify the entire area where you're at. <laughs> that they don't need to respond with um, sending the fire department and Coast Guard, et cetera. And so just call us before you go in. And then when you come out, give us a call and you can wave this on the camera. <laughs> and, and I was like, I'm, I'm so uncomfortable with this because I'm like, oh geez, I'm too much. I'm making such a scene here, but I also really like going into the ice water because it feels really good. So I want to keep doing this thing. And so now I'm at a deeper relationship with the city of Chicago, with people who are like there doing their job and stuff. And I'm having these conversations and it's more complex than I ever wanted or expected, <laughs> but I'm actually able to get in and, and start navigating this stuff and finding out what, what, what I can do to really get what I want. And in career in the, the people that I work with, um, this is so often the case is folks are unhappy with their their current company and you know the the first response is i need to get the hell out of here uh, just like me with all the police this morning was like like ah like run um but if i can stay present to that and actually see what's going on and develop the relationship like with the I did a little bit with the one officer I'm just sad because I could have I bet I could have gotten his contact information he started telling me about his health about his routine about what he does he started like oh my gosh I probably just lost a client because I didn't have a little more of a conversation with him and say hey let's you know or do you ever want to like you know grab coffee or something and talk more about this Ah, oh, you know, so I feel sad about it, but I at least was able to stay with him long enough in the conversation to gather that no, I'm not in trouble and no, I don't have to hide this. No, there's other things I might be able to do. So that's so often going to be the case in career. Now it's not always, you know, sometimes you're, you're in a company where it's just not going to be a good fit. Um, but 
or you're, you're working with somebody that's a real challenge. But I'll tell you, if you can dig in with the person who you're having a real challenge with and you can, can learn a lot from that relationship, even if they're an asshole, if, the, if they really are, you're still going to, that's gonna help you so in so many other places. There's always gonna be challenging people to work with. So we like to have you work with the challenging people right around you. Um, great. Oh, okay, so Becca, you have two things you have avoided asking. Are you willing to share about that? <laughs> Thank you, Becca. As you're, as you're coming on in here, I'll just share with everybody. So there's a couple ways that you can engage with Career Lab. Um, one is, I love it when you jump on Zoom, like Samantha, Rebecca, James, Robin, Angela. Welcome, Angela. And you can join in and we can work together um, directly here. If you're unable to, and you're only able to join in through LinkedIn, um, you can type your questions into the comment section and Jane Coletta will make sure that I see those here. And if I don't get to them today, then I'll circle back with you throughout the week and, and see if I can help you there. And again, all questions are fair game here. Our job is to support you in your career. Um, also want to set the context of when somebody else is working and and coaching and talking through what they're doing, you want to apply what they're saying to yourself. That's some uh, feedback that I've gotten from folks who have found this group really useful, is that there, there's something about being in a group of people and knowing, okay, we're all working on this thing together, that is, um, it's, it, it's very helpful. I'm sure that there's, there's a ton of research on it. I'm not going to get into that. But know that as people are sharing that you can really be pulling from what they're saying and applying it to yourself. So, Rebecca, so tell me about, there's a couple things you've avoided asking. Uh, one of those being working from home on Wednesdays. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we were working from home uh, when the COVID issue went back in January. They told us that they wanted us to sort of not all be in the office at the same time. So up until the beginning of April, we were all working from home two days a week mm -hmm. and Wednesdays and Fridays. And those days are good for me because that's when I get to see my kids. Um, and it just makes things a lot easier. Um, and I feel less stressed out because I don't have to leave work so early to go get my kids, number one and number two. If, you know, I can do things like this without having to feel awkward, you know, like at my lunch hour or whatever, mm -hmm. or it, like, you know, go take a yoga class also without, you know, feeling awkward, um, but still get all my work in and I feel even more productive actually. But the thing is, is like, I'm afraid to ask because I don't want like the final no, <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause it's like, it's almost like if I don't ask it, then there's still like a possibility that they'll say that they, that they will say yes they won't say no um okay because i'm afraid to get like the final answer because it is such an important thing like it's it's like very it's become very important for me like it's almost like one of my values now it's like okay well i can clearly work from home at least one day a week and it's going to actually improve my productivity hey do you, uh, do you are you able to show that well Again, that goes back to my own, you know, I matter thing. I mean, I'm sure I can show that, but I'm like, do I have enough evidence? <laughs> you know, like. Well, what, what evidence do you have? Well, I mean, I have the evidence of my work. I have the evidence of the things that I'm accomplishing. Mm -hmm. But some of the evidence isn't like hard and fast. You know, it's just evidence of my, of less stress in my life, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but I, you know, how do I prove, how do I get somebody else to care about whether or not I have less stress in my life? Well, what's your relationship like with your, your manager or supervisor or boss? Would it, tell me a little bit more about. It seems your... pretty good. He's new. I just started there in, in June of last year. It seems pretty good. But at the same time at this particular company, you know, is one of those, it's, it's an older, 
opinionate, you know, that kind of older opinion type company. Like they don't want people consistently. This isn't something that they want. They want everybody back in the office. So it would be changing their culture. Yeah. Um, and somebody's already left actually. I, I heard that somebody left actually because, you know, they wanted a remote job. So they actually left a job. They left their position. They, I'm sure that maybe they didn't, but in my mind, I'm assuming that they told my company, look, I've got this other company offering me a hundred percent remote job. And they probably were like, well, then go, <laughs> you know, but so you don't know in my mind about, you know, what they said to them. And at the end of the day, you know, um, I don't want to go looking for another job right now. I just want this job to be better because I really like what I do. Um, well, if you were your, your, is it your boss or supervisor? She's my manager. Yeah. Your manager. Okay. And she's if like you, the vice president, one of the vice presidents of the company. So, I mean, she's up there. So if you were her, what would you want you to do? I think she wants all of her employees to be, you know, available, which I am. When she no, but if you, if you were her, would you, would you want you to talk to her about it and say, hey, this is something on my mind? Um, sure, but yes, I'm sure I would want my employee to talk to me about it. Yes. Okay. Because part of what, you know, can happen is if you don't, then the resentment starts to build. Yeah, right. And you can even say, I mean, what you're saying is, is this makes my life this much better. You know, here's the, the areas of stress that I don't have, et cetera. Um, and at the same time, I, I'm not interested in looking for something else. You could just be upfront with her about, you know, and just say, so I'm, I'm bringing this up because I want to see if there's some way that we can, you know, have a win-win here. How does that sound? Good way to present it. Cause that way you're, you're elite. Cause she, her fear would be that, that you're gonna, you're a flight risk. And so if you can let her know that's not the case, but also say, and I really want, you know, this has been so helpful to me. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I have a, a, you know, fair amount of anxiety about thinking about not having my Wednesdays this way. Oh, well, I went back to not having it this way. And it's been awful. <laughs> so like for the month of April, like. For oh, geez. Okay. I went well, back not having it like that. So like we get like two days a month that we have to like sign up for that we can work from home, but that's not enough. Like I need everyone. <laughs> so we get like two whole days. Okay. Out of the month. Well, are you so going to talk to her about it? Yes. Yeah. I'll talk to her about it. Will you let check in and let us know how that's going? Sure. Okay. Even if it's a month from now, if, in case you don't get next Wednesday off. Okay. To, to work remotely. I can cool. do that. And by the way, I mean, Becca, this is huge for like millions of Americans right now. Mm -hmm. Probably millions of people in the world. So yeah, we might even be in billions of, of people who are having the same questions that you're having. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yeah. Can I tell you my other one or is that too much time? Well, I've got Samantha who wants, um, who wants to know about transferable skills, but I think we've got the time. So let's, I'll get into your second one in just a second. Uh, I want to do a quick room reset. We've had a few people join. Welcome, Nancy. Um, welcome, everybody out there on LinkedIn Live. Um, this is Career Lab Wednesday. I'm your host, George Donald Miller. And I'm with you every Wednesday from noon to 1 p.m. Central, um, opening the floor to all career-related questions. So we're looking at social and emotional intelligence um, and how to deepen rapport with people that you work with, how to deepen rapport on interviews, all of that stuff. It is the 
developing your social and emotional intelligence is the number one skill that will um, help you in all areas of your career, unless you're doing assembly line work. Um, but if you are interacting with people at all, um, developing your SEI is a good thing. So Rebecca, let's check in for the park district by my house that I can cultivate the wetlands. Oh, say more. So, um, so I have the wetland next to me. So I, I'm like right next door to the park district. Um, and um, I have a wetland behind my house and I stopped mowing where it is because I started noticing like some different type grasses growing up there. And so when I stopped mowing, I realized that they were like actually like wetlands, like grasses. Oh, cool. Yeah. So then the spring, like I noticed that like, so we've got a creek behind our house. So it floods when it flooded, like it flooded the park district it flooded my neighbors but where I where I stopped mowing and where I started like putting in some more like wetland plants and stuff like it it like handled the flooding if that makes sense like you could clearly see the difference between where my backyard was and so where the you, park district you put in more wet mm -hmm. water plant or uh, wetlands plants yeah, like water loving plant. Yeah, I put like I added to it. Like I started like seeding it and like adding to mo more of it. But I keep watching like the park district. Like they basically hired these these guys to um to mow, and oh, they, just, they so they just mow. They just come in. Like, they're like these these um they just hired some guys and they just come in and they mow. And so every week, like I watch those grasses grow up, and I'm like. If they would just stop mowing this strip like it would just stop <laughs> like it would I just keep seeing it like it's so painful to watch it and um but then every week I like watch them come in and they like mow it all down like everything that's like grown back and I'm like well have, like, have you called the park no, district no, I have not called the park district <laughs> cool I could tell you it I was amazed at how easy it was I started off with 311 Chicago's mm -hmm. like non-emergency number yeah. And then they put me in touch with a police officer um, who basically said, you know, it's not against the law to go into the lake. I, I can't tell you not to. And then he said, but why don't you call the Marine unit and, and talk to them some more? And I, I did all this. I was amazed at how fast I was expecting it to be like, you know, when I try to like cancel some service that I signed up for on a whim and I'm trying to cancel it and I call in and it takes like an hour, <laughs> but, but this was like five minutes. So are you going to get the, the park district number and give them a call? Is the next question is going to be that, are you going to follow up with us after you've done so? <laughs> You're seeing a pattern here. <laughs> Yes, I will get the park district number and I will give them a call. I'll see if I can find somebody to talk to about it. Cool. And it's an awesome way to, to work your social and emotional intelligence with this stuff. And just giving them some background, you know, how many calls do they get that where, you know, it's like they're not even talking to a human. It's like, like, oh, this needs to be fixed or blah, blah, blah. Just like that kind of thing. But if you can go in, one of the things I did when I called was um, I said, you know, let me give you a little background here. <laughs> I was like, I, I was at the I've been swimming in the water for a while and this morning and then um, the, the officer said, Ohio Street Beach. Yep. Yep. I was watching you. <laughs> I saw you. So there was that already we had, you know, I, we, we were building rapport with each other. So take that into your conversation and see if you can use it as a way to have fun and, and make a contact. Cool. Sounds good. Cool. I look forward to hearing about these two exciting conversations. Thank you, George. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, Becca. Thanks for jumping in. Thank you. Cool. Samantha. Samantha, are you available to, to come Hi. off? Sorry, 
I was just muting because I'm allergies and I didn't want to be rude and have to have everyone hear me blow my nose. Thank you very much. Thank you. I try. So um, as you understand in career, um, I've done a bunch of different things. So I have a resume of stuff, which is not a bad thing, but they all sort of, I DC did administrative stuff for a long time. And I don't mind saying that, I don't mind disclosing, I'm ADHD, putting an ADHD person in an office. My therapist, like you're saying with accountability, my therapist is looking at me like, you're gonna be miserable, look into other things. Like you're telling, like, you know, do your research, do accountability and checking in. So I'm trying to do homework on learning about transferable skills to see if what I can do in other things since I really am a people person and I like helping people. And I'm trying to see if there's other things I can do that just go, I'm, I'm comfortable sitting in office. I'm not in office at the moment, but I think you've probably seen that people go back to what they've done before because it's easy. But I don't really want to do that. And I've been applying for jobs that I'm overqualified for because it's like subject, all these administrative assistant jobs, but I have 10 plus years of administrative experience, but no managerial. So if I apply for an administrative assistant, they're all looking at me, lady, what are you doing? And obvious for good reason, no one wants to call me back. Wait, so why I'm, don't they want to call you back? I figure I'm overqualified. Well, maybe, but how are you submitting your... Well, I mean, I'm trying, I'm trying to re really sort of think everything because I, I've done a bunch of different things and it's also really determining what I want to do, which is why I sort of figured I like the concept of transferable skills because every time I've done a lot of these quizzes or like not so much quizzes, but tests on, see what you are best at. And I always fall back into social services because I, I did that for a long time in like the social work arena, but I'm a little older, so I'm in my forties and to go back and get another master's in social work, to then go do that kind of stuff is not something that I want to do at this stage in life. Like I already, you know, I've been through school and not that I dislike school, but I've been through school and I, to go back at this age is a little late for me. It's totally have, not, but, but. I don't have the energy to be an intern again or financial to be able to go to school full time. I need to make, you know. Okay. Well, um, There's a few things about, so the transferable skills, I mean, you have, um, I'm sure that you have a bunch that you can apply to wherever, the, but what we find is the best way to get into a position that you want and, and the, the, the approach that we take is for you to connect with a lot of people. Okay. And to share your resume, um, set up as many interviews as you can with places and you don't, are you currently working? I am, and it's funny what I actually do. I actually technically work at an executive search firm at the moment, which is weird irony. I know, it makes, yeah, I text, yeah. Have you talked to anybody that you work with and let them know that you're looking for something else? Oh, I'm not, I don't wanna, I technically don't wanna work there. It's, it's literally media, it's, a, it's a basically, how I ended up there is a family member of mine has been in the company for years. So I'm doing like research and administrative tasks there because it's something that I'm decent at, but it's not what I want to do. But have you talked to anybody there and said, hey, I'm, I'm wanting, this has been great while I have it, but I'm looking for something else. Yeah, it, because it's a family thing, it doesn't work sort of that way. So I have to sort of make things on my own. You understand, well, yeah. So, so you're saying, so you work, it's a family business. I basically, the person that, that I'm working with is a member of my family. So. And so what's it going to be like when you leave? I, I, you know, I mean, there are other people working with this person and I think she understands it's temporary, but it will also be better for our relationship if we're not working together. Have you talked to her about that? She knows that, you know, I'm looking for different things. Because right there might be a really valuable resource for you. I actually, it's funny, I've tried asking her for help in the past, and it doesn't actually work. Oh, okay. 
I've asked, yeah, it's very interesting. Then it sounds like that's not what you're going to do because you've tried uh -huh. it. It hasn't worked. Okay. I mean, and it's funny because when I ask other people for help, other people are very, because when I've been in other roles, like I've helped other people like with their, their resumes and their cover letters and all that stuff. It's more, I'm trying to figure out what, what would make, you're seeing how you love what you do. And I know, I think it was, Jay, um, was it, Rebecca said she loved what she does. I don't know what that is right now. And so, that's oh, so have you, have you ever had a job where you just loved it? Not really. I mean, I've enjoyed, like, there are fun things that I enjoy doing. There was a program that I used to work at where like, it was a recreation program for adults with developmental disabilities. There were components of it that I didn't like because, you know, that's part of it. But I definitely liked, I liked the, the social aspect of helping people and making a difference in their lives. Which is when, which is how when I do all of these sort of, te not tests, but sort of you know tests that tell you what what your best career is. They all throw them in the education world and everything, and then social services. Tried doing education in the past. Actually, went and got a master's in special ed, but I couldn't get through student teaching. Yeah, I have a I have a lot of school, but yeah. obviously. So I want to find out just a little bit more quickly here. Where are you at? Do you have brothers and sisters? I'm an only child. Okay. What did your mom and dad do for work or, or what did they do? Uh, my dad worked in travel. He's been gone now for like 10 years. Okay. I'm older. I'm 44. So my mom taught till I was born. So 40 years ago. Then she worked in retail for a little while and then she did nothing. Um, my stepfather is a lawyer. My parents were separated forever. Um, and then obviously, you know, so the executive search is my stepmother, actually. Okay. Yeah. And she, I've learned, if nothing else, it's been a great experience on learning professional skills that I wish I would have gotten in younger years because you talk about the soft skills. I've gained a lot of experience with the soft skills and the professionalism working with her because I have to deal with people from all levels. But it's trying to like I don't want to go get another job and then be miserable and yeah yeah, yeah. like yeah. I just went and I got during COVID, a little before COVID I went and I got a medical coding degree so I got if you know degrees I have like a register I'm a registered health information technician it's, it's a title whatever it's a piece of paper it's a certification and then COVID hit and I didn't want to walk in a hospital mm -hmm. so then I went and worked for the census for a little bit and then COVID, COVID was going on with it. They wanted me to go right back. I'm a mere compromise. So I wasn't going into an office. So Samantha, you just, there's a way that you've just kind of been bouncing around in your career. And yeah, I'm just trying to look for, I just have to figure out where. Well, you've, but it sounds like you've never really known no, yourself and, and what will really. Exactly. That's okay. why all these things, like, you know, I mean, I'm not looking for a magic answer. I'm just at least trying to, maybe someone could help me, at least give me the point of the direction. And I've done the, what color is the parachute book? I did them. Yep. I'm a, like, I'm a well-read person. So like, I've done all that. I've done the, you know, look at your- No, but you, but there's the experiential side of it that-, that... Yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I mean, I'll probably do it again, just so that I can do it again. But... Yeah, okay, I, I, are, are you interested? open to a uh, suggestion yes i'm open to that's why i'm here because i okay. i i've learned nothing else as i've learned that what i know about the world is this much and everyone else knows this much and to, oh no it's funny i went to oh, so everybody I, knows more than you do no that's not what i meant the okay. world is this big i am one person if i go and ask other people no no i mean how i actually got of a lot of information is my partner, I went to had dinner with his father and not stepmother, but you know, um, but, and she happened to be in the education world in the past and was a consultant and she mentioned transferable skills. This is the first time I ever met them. And this was our, this was our Passover dinner conversation. So this is the person I am. I'm the person who, as you could tell, I'm extroverted. I have no problem admitting, you know what, I'm human. I don't know everything. I know what I know and I know what I don't know. And, you know, help me. Like, that's my, 
that's how I serve it up in social service all the time because I'm very patient with people. Like, like Rebecca said, calling someone on the phone, like I would do what you did. You tell me to call someone, sure, no problem. Like that to me is very easy. I have no problem going and engaging with people. I'm more the, I almost get in trouble and I've had issues where I'm too friendly and I'm too outgoing and I want to go. So I've had to learn to more, be a little more introverted and sit quietly. I want to help. I want to do something. I want to be there for everyone. Okay. So Samantha, my feedback and, and hunch is that um, you're kind of a lot like me in, in this way, in that you, you're probably the cooperator personality style. You know, you, you want, you're kind of the glue in groups. You help hold things together. Yeah. Um, I'm the organizer also. Okay. Well, you're, you're better off there than I am. I'm not much of the organizer, but so you're, you're the uh, cooperator analyzer. And, and there's a way that you, you are good at what you do. And yet you haven't really learned how to make it for you and to really get satisfied. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes, exactly. That that's the problem. It's like, it's funny. Cause I should that's something you see what one thing enjoy doing. It's so I had to whatever. So I had bariatric surgery, so I'm this bariatric support group. And the person who leads the group, who I love dearly, is a social worker. I love what she does. Now, to do what she does, it have to be a social worker. I understand this legally, but I, I just because, you know, with legality and all the rules and medical and things, but I unofficially help people. And people come to me and they ask me, answer me, for, I, I answer their questions. And of course, it's all unofficial, but I like helping people. Like, I like knowing that I made a difference in someone's life. It's not about, you know, I mean, not looking to make a lot of money. I mean, I, I and this is going to sound funny, and I live in New York, but I just literally want a, 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 a acceptable salary and health insurance. I'm very fortunate that I have a partner that makes a decent amount of money. So money's not so much my fear. I just, I don't, I want to be, not be bored every day. And yeah, it's very okay. hard for someone who's ADHD who's bored every day. So there's a, there's a couple of things I want you to do. Um, I have my notepad. This is how I do everything. Can you look on your calendar? Yes. Okay. What are you doing June um, 3rd and 4th? Nothing. Okay. So we're, we'll throw a link in the chat for you. You got it, Jane. More life training. That is our Friday evening and Saturday training, deep dive into social and emotional intelligence. It's a training that lawyers, um, coaches, social workers, etc., will come uh, to to get CEUs. It's so funny. My partner's a lawyer. It's funny you say lawyers because I have a lawyer. You could both come. Oh yeah, yeah. He has CEU. Yeah, he's got his CEUs. Yeah. Okay, so. But, but what the training's really about is you getting in touch with yourself on a level that you probably haven't before. And from that place, being able to orient towards your North Star, you, you okay. yourself, while you're interviewing, while you're talking to people and able to say, oh, this really is, this sounds good, this feels good to me or this doesn't oh I have these questions about this and and it will help you um navigate uh your journey in this more most of us have kind of grown up um learning how to to comb trying to comb the hair in a mirror rather than you know combing our own hair and hoping that if I do enough things for other people and stuff um then they'll get it and they'll give that back to me but that doesn't tend to happen. No. And so this is kind of, that's that. And then the other thing is we have, we have a, a quick workshop uh, next Thursday, Boost Your Emotional Intelligence, um, that my uh, colleague Jillian Eichel is going to be leading. She's awesome. So you should go there just to meet her. I think, um, I, I, think I may have signed up for it. Is it on the, is it at 12? Is it at 12? It's uh, April 28th. Oh, okay. I signed up for something. I don't even know what I signed up for. Oh, okay. good. Thank you. 
I like yes. her. I'm very, I'm very good. You give me like something to sign up for. Yeah. That's basically what I was doing. LinkedIn, I realized I spend a lot of money for LinkedIn Premiere and I kind of, because I use it for work. So I forget that it does other things because I'm on it. Is, your, is your work paying for it? No. Well, I had you it should for be me. paying for it if you're using it for work. Because I originally had it for me. Okay. Okay, fine. Fine. Well, because you're moving on to something else anyway. But um, basically the work is so that way I have something to do during the day and I get a little bit of money because I need something to do during the day. Because if I sit at home and I do nothing, my headspace is going to get in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. And by the way, ADHD, I mean, I've never been tested, but I'm pretty sure I'm, you know, about as ADHD as it gets. But I have read uh, Tom Hartman's stuff, uh, the Edison gene. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, no. It, it, it's and, great for some things, and but I, what, what I'm telling you is, I won't. It's no excuse with me. I know. No, I don't it, consider it as okay. an excuse at all. I just make the comment that because I know I have this, I know that there's certain jobs that are just not. Like my therapist made a really good point. She's like, if you, because she has a lot of her clients are ADHD. She's like, if you expect to sit in an office at a desk all day and sit there quietly and. She's like, you're going to drive yourself and everyone else around you crazy. <laughs> and she says this the most loving way. She knows me very well. Cool, she cool. Says it loving way. Okay, you got know it. You. You're not going to be able to sit still for, like, I can sit still. Like, here's the thing. If I have a project to do, I'll listen and I'll be respectful to any of the requests. But I'll be staring at a computer screen. I'm the, so for, I can do that for a couple hours, but every single day staring at the screen. Totally, not, totally. So, so anytime that you're not doing that and anytime you're not moving towards something that is your satisfaction, you're being mean to yourself. So, so it's incumbent upon you. I had many you. years of that already, so. Yeah, so, so cool. So you're going to start learning the skills on how to catch that. Okay. On how to catch where you start to go down that rabbit hole of of being mean to yourself, and because we're all going to do it to some degree, we all have our own flavor of of being mean to ourselves. But part of what you're going to learn on, especially on the more life training, is one of the things I love about our organization is that we actually um, go into how to use um, stinking thinking and uh, limiting beliefs and are what most people say are negative feelings, fear, hurt, anger, sadness. Yes. And instead of just saying, oh, I'm just gonna, you know, keep telling myself that I'm great and stuff, which the conscious mind is like, okay, I'm doing that. But the unconscious mind is like, yeah, but um, the fact <laughs> that you don't have it all together means you're not. And, and anyway, the unconscious mind can get pretty cruel. We actually tap into the unconscious mind and, and rather than try to tell ourselves we're wrong about it, we just look at how to, how to be use, use it. So you're going to be learning a lot more about that on the more life training about how to catch your limiting thoughts and about how to um, identify the feelings and emotions um, associated with that limiting thought and then actually how to use, use the, the feelings and the yearnings. Yeah. So... Okay, and just a better question. I'm obviously going to sign up for all this, but because I'm supposed to make progress, not for myself, try to do different steps. Is there anything that you recommend I read? I mean, obviously. Oh yeah, Wait, you'll get a you'll get a book called Transformed. Okay, is this something I need to order? Because I, I like to It's you're gonna if when you register for the More Life training, you're you're gonna get an email, and you can just say, "Hey, I want uh, either a, a an what is it? The Kindle version or a, a, a hard copy? Okay, I need I need hard copy. I'm kind of great. Old. We'll send you the hard copy. I'm kind of old school. I don't have a piece of paper. It's I can't I can't you know totally. Cool. That's great. I mean I I yeah the books that I really like I get a hard copy of. I have a lot of those. I mean I I've so, been through like all like the self help books and so it's now really the the other thing that I want you to do in in this is this is like a a very basic thing but what you can be experimenting with in between now and, and next week on the emotional intelligence one is to start paying attention to what you're feeling okay you can write down fear hurt anger sadness joy right, can i ask you a question were you ever a therapist 
No. No, 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 no. I don't mean that because that sounds like things that my therapist has me do, which is interesting. Cool. Cool. I A lot of people I work with um, say that they get a lot more uh, value out of their therapy sessions. Yeah. Because, I mean, there's something about like noting feelings and then dismissing them because I have anxiety. Yeah, but I don't want you to it's dismiss them. Yeah. I don't want you to it's dismiss them. Okay. I want you to, to notice them. And in fact, um, fear, hurt, anger, sadness, joy, and you can make little tick marks underneath those feeling words when you notice yourself feeling them. Okay. And that's it. I don't want you to dismiss them. Okay. So not noting. I'm so, I'm so trained to do things a certain way. Yes. Okay. No, no. All, this is an exploration of yourself. Okay. Should I, of course, pay attention to what causes that versus like, I mean, if nope. I, nope. I felt this way. Nope. Just that. Just focus okay. on, on the feeling. Okay. You can go real slow with it. There's, you, you, we all try to go so fast and we end up missing ourselves in the process. And it sounds like you've had 40 some years of missing yourself. So just, just a little. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Look Thank at you. you. So yeah, that's it. So as, as you're noticing yourself more and, and that's all, that's all you got to do for a bit. And I, I, I can do baby steps. Cool. 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 Law. Yes. Yes. Baby steps. Law of little things. Well, sweet. Samantha, thank you so much. And I'm, I'm yeah. looking forward um, to seeing you there. I'll be one of the team leads. Okay. And, and then in reference to Wednesdays, is this something that you do every Wednesday? How does, do it every like, Wednesday. Is it something where it's a, like mailing list or is it on LinkedIn? I just have to basically follow your group. Yep. Follow on LinkedIn. And if you have any better ideas about how to advertise it, let us know. I probably have some thoughts. That's like, Okay, cool. Okay, yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll put the other side of my brain on in a little bit. Okay, thank you so much. I'll let other people talk. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Samantha. So I want to check in with everybody. This is Career Lab Wednesday, and we are here every Wednesday from noon to one central time. And our job is to help you in your career. And I, I'll circle back on what Dr. Gordon Medlock, who's often with us, shares, which is your career, the way that we look at it is really just a pathway or a vessel for you to become who you can become. So we look at work as pay for play. And what, what can you be doing in your career, in your career search, et cetera, that is you getting to know more about yourself and develop yourself, develop your gifts, because there's only one of you on the planet and there's only one of you in all time, all space that's ever been is here right now. And so what is the, the, the job or whatever it is that is going to help you develop yourself and have you be more you? Because if it's not, if you're not working somewhere where that's happening, there are two things, either you're going to go somewhere else or you're going to use that environment to develop your skills, develop your interpersonal skills, develop whatever other skills that you may need to. And in that process, um, very likely transform the culture there. Because we, we look at, at creating a world that works for everybody, but we, we see that happening and doing that by empowering every single individual to be who you can be right where you're at and, and uh, bring about change um, right where you're at. And, and that oftentimes, I mean, we've got uh, people who, you know, are going back to the office and are like, hey, I actually was doing better when I was working remotely some and I'm able to take care of my family more. And I think I actually can provide more value for the company um, when things are set up this way. And so there's all kinds of conversations that we can be having um, that are helping us develop our gifts, our innate gifts of um, communication, communicating with other people. Um, along with all the other things. So I just wanted to kind of 
scoop scoop all of what we've been talking about today in here. So the tra number one transferable skill is you developing your social emotional intelligence. Most jobs, most anybody who's probably anybody who's going to be on um, this uh, meeting with us, that is probably the case. Um, is the more that you're able to build rapport with people, deepen your your level of engagement with others, really be able to see and be with other people, uh, that's going to help you in your career significantly. Um, the Harvard Business Review, you know, puts out a lot of articles and the, the one that CEOs most uh, look at, most reference was one from 1999, uh, Daniel Goleman's um, article on social and emotional intelligence. So, hugely important. And again, uh, for those of you who haven't, we, we have uh, evening workshops where we go more into social and emotional intelligence um, training and the more life training that we do five times a year, which is a kick-ass training. I volunteer for it every, almost every time because I get so much value from it. So. Question, George. Yes, Nancy, good to see you. Great to be here. Awesome to be here. Yeah, so I am, you probably know, I, I've been in human resources and uh, I am pivoting, although I am staying in human resources, but more so the vision that I have is to uh, pivot from like, um, more so towards employee engagement. And I am cool. finding, yeah, yeah. I'm deeply passionate about that. And uh, I'm having a hard time to transfer, although I have done employee engagement quite a bit, but the focus of my career has been in HR managerial, HR director, not so much focusing solely on uh, employee engagement. And so I am wanting to really heavily focus on employee engagement and uh, I have a lot of the skills. I mean, I've been in HR for years, but to really hone, you know, sell myself, market myself as an employee engagement director, that's where I'm having, you know, some difficulties in. So I'll like, you know, some suggestions. Well, what's your LinkedIn say? I have the LinkedIn profile. It, talks about, you know, me having, uh, you know, looking for that type of work. And, you know, because I have been um, in WGU, as you know, for the last two years, so I've started to, there was a big gap from the last time that I worked was two, two years ago to me, you know, being in school. And so I uh, started to put, you know, I have been doing things in the last two years. So I've incorporated that into my profile. Okay. So Nancy, I will well, we'll get into what we can here. Um, I think that this is something that we want to keep revisiting. Um, and, but what do you, cause you, you probably know better than I do, but I don't know that you've had the space to kind of talk into it and explore. But my hunch is that you actually know what you could be doing more than I do. What, are, what have you been doing so far? In terms of the uh, job search? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, in terms of the job search, really I've been focusing heavily on online search and networking has been slow. You know, meeting people and networking with others has been slow, but really my main focus has been you know, those, you know, let's say career builder or LinkedIn, those type of um, ways of looking for work. You know, maybe have, have you done the, the thing where you uh, identify the companies that you want to work for? I did a search a couple of months ago and I've identified some companies, but I have not really reached out to them. So that well, would be there's a, so Nancy, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. I mean, there's there's a are you are you an analyzer? I'm not. No. I'm okay. Really well, then then I'm really not going to give you an excuse because um, 
you just got to start moving on it. You got to start setting up the interviews and um, setting up meetings and identifying the companies that you're really interested in. Okay. Even, if, even if you just think you are, but you don't even know for sure. Okay. Um, and, and, and start having the conversations because that will help give you more data points. It'll help give you a better sense of what you need. And, and you're in WGU, so you're doing the presentations. Mm-hmm. Yes. So right there, you can start identifying some of these companies that you're interested in working for. And you can say, hey, as part of my master's program, I'm doing trainings in this, this, and this. I'd like to um, come in and do one of these. It's going to be no cost to you. All I ask is that you, um, is that, that the staff or whoever um, you know, fill out the, the feedback forms. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, you're like, you're in it. Nancy. In you're, you're, you're doing the stuff like yeah. with yeah. school, just make them go like this. And what well, that's the connection. I'm going to mention that that was the disconnect for me. I didn't see it, you know? Yeah, I, no, no, you, Nancy, yeah. you are the connection point mm-hmm. is it's you, you matter yeah. and you getting satisfied I, I'm saying this because I relate a ton, mm-hmm. my mistaken belief being that I don't matter and I have to work extra hard. Yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, just, I don't know if you caught the story I was sharing this morning about the, uh, the Coast Guard police and fire department showing up to save me from uh, drowning in the lake, except I wasn't drowning in the lake. I was just swimming in there like I like to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and my first response was, Oh, just get away from these people. I'm in trouble. But then I was present enough to be able to start talking to one of the officers and saying, okay, you know, what do I need to do? Um, and, and realizing, oh, I can actually make things work. The fact that I want this is okay. I matter. Mm -hmm. And so that you want to work in a company that you like and that you employee engagement. I mean, Jesus, God almighty, like the, the, the right now there's so many companies that probably need what you what you want to do so so stop ripping people off and uh, get yourself into places uh because you're a gift yeah thank you now question judge what i did the session i did i just googled you know companies i just basically did a basic search like social emotional intelligence you know companies who i would start with people who you already know okay Start okay. with people who you already know and ask them. Call okay. people up and say, what do you know about, what is your company really needing right now? Just start investigating. Start, did you do the grounded theory course yet at WGU? I did, I did, yes. Well, yes. now we're doing a grounded theory study of Nazi in the world and in, yeah. in, yeah. in companies and what do companies really need. Tons of companies have no idea what they really need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most companies don't really know what they need. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Things are changing so quickly. So employee, but employee engagement is something that I think companies- That's huge. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. So that's does that give you something to work with between now absolutely, and now? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, I'm going to want to hear- Okay. That you, you know, some points of contact that you've made around this. Some of these okay. conversations and this, because you, you've got, I mean, you're well-trained- Mm -hmm. um probably more than you realize yeah 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 i have Uh, a lot of yeah i wanted to to get get british wilburn in here nancy we've got like a minute two and a half minutes left Um, so check in with us british wilburn um are you able to come off mute thank you nancy um the cost of it's the cost of education that i feel is stifling my growth only tried to enroll in school and was told I had to make under. Uh, I know. British, it, it I know it, it, it sucks. And I hope that um, I'm praying that something will change in the not too distant future about education in this country. Um, and, you know, I don't think that there's anything better to invest in than yourself Um, and any way that you're able to make it work, I would encourage you to do it. I I have and am continuing to 
to pay off student loans. Um, but it's, it's not something I regret doing, but it, you know, I'd be lying if I said it's not a challenge. Um, I am hoping that uh, our commander in chief signs some things that has us uh, not have so much school debt. But that being said, I encourage you to do it. Um, I, I work with people who have uh, come over, who are working in, in the US from other countries. Um, and they still see a lot of what we have as hugely valuable um, gifts. And I remember one guy, I was like, how are you doing so well? Didn't the recession, because he was working in real estate, didn't the recession affect you back in 2008? This was a few years ago we were talking and, and uh, he was from uh, what was the Eastern Bloc. And he said, you have no idea what recession is. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> He's like, this, this is nothing. No, this is, this is pathetic. <laughs> I was like, all right. All right. So I guess uh, I, 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 I got to, uh, you know, um, be more creative with myself and, and uh, making money and coming up with things as well. So it's not always just the hard work British. It's the, it, it, there's ways of engaging and um, doing things. It's not, not necessarily just, you know, hard work that will help you, but hard work is definitely required. So I hope that helps. Um, we got a wrap. I have a session starting now, so I'm going to jump out of this quickly, but I will see you all next Wednesday, noon to 1 p.m. Central time. So good to be with you all. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your engagement. All right. Take care, everybody.